Everybody's sticking with me. 4 p.m. Sun's going down, losing steam. You want to take a second, check your phones, move your shoulders around. Okay. Back at it. All right. I'm really excited to be here. Thank you guys, Derek and Riju, for organizing today. Um, and thank you guys all for coming out and for everybody who's watching online. Uh, my name is Matt. I'm from Redox. And today we're going to talk about uh, how to activate as much clinical data as possible into Google Cloud so that you can run it through all of these awesome generative AI features, third party products and different Google products that you've been hearing about throughout the day. So I'm gonna find the button, we'll get into it. There we go. So uh, quickly, a little bit about myself. I joined Redox when it was uh, a group of us working in a single room on the square in Madison, uh, back when we had done about four health system connections. Uh, since then, we've done a little over 6,400 and, and some, uh, and I've been at a front row seat to get to see how providers, payers, uh, digital health companies, are connecting to one another, sharing data, and able to really get to scale and full data utilization. Um, a couple other facts about me, uh, not a generative AI expert, but I am pretty good at solving clinical data problems. Um, and that's how we're going to view today's uh, topic. A little bit that we're going to go through, I'm going to introduce you to Redox. We're going to talk about how you can activate that data. I'm going to show you how we build future-proof data strategies for our customers. And I'm going to talk to you about how that data can help you get the most out of these generative AI product investments. Let's dive in. So here's the scene, 2015, 2016, the world's going out, digital health is exploding, everybody wants to get providers the technology they can use, but everybody's building their own EHR integrations and point-to-point -point data exchanges, and this is what the world looks like. It is the terrible web of redundancy. Um, everybody's out there exchanging specs, building VPNs, trying to manage it, trying to maintain it, setting filters, changing filters, what happens during an EHR upgrade? Oh my God, somebody broke something at lunch and everything stopped. And so, we sat down and we said, well, wait a second. If everybody's building the same data exchange layers, demographics over here, scheduled appointments over there, CCDs over here, X12 over there, then why don't we try to build it in such a way that when we connect to health system A on behalf of partner number one, uh, when partner number two needs to connect to health system A for that same demographic feed, we can tap right into that same infrastructure. And that was the beginning of the Redux network. Now, fast forward, uh, we tried to simplify all of it, right? try to bring in all of that VPN management, all of that interface management, the filter changes, the config updates, somebody buys another health system and they roll a new EHR uh, into the mix. That living and breathing footprint uh, becomes something that we take on on behalf of all of these other vendors and providers and payers such that they can go and actually make healthcare useful and, and improve things for patients. This is what that network growth looks like over those years. And so you can see, we got started, it was kind of slow going. And as we grew, we hit a bit of a momentum and an inflection point. And what customers found was by using Redox, they were able to take a whole big chunk of infrastructure work that their engineering teams were doing, both either as an ISV or even as a provider organization, and free those teams up to actually work at the experience layer, right? Improve patient experience, make it easier for providers to leverage the technology that they're being tasked with over and over every year. Um, and what we found is that you know, groups are really able to get that value and that maximum reusability. Now, what does this mean? Um, show of hands quick, how many of you are from provider orgs today? Okay, the few, the proud. What about payers in the room, anybody? Okay, digital health. All right, where's everybody from? Good grief. Um, in any case, uh, when, we, when we look at what you get out of this, we've, we've got flowing through the network every single day, about 6,500 connected health systems, just over 400 different vendors. We've got all sorts of HIEs, state, national, federal registries. During COVID, we ended up hooking up to all the vaccine registries and all the government entities. So it's all this concept of any place that data needs to go, it's there and the pipes exist to send it. Um, now, how does this happen? It happens by taking real-time interfaces, as many as we can get our hands on from whatever data sources are available, whether that's HL7, I mentioned X12, we've got CCDs, vendor APIs, Fire APIs. If you can get it to me in a, CC, a CSV in a flat file every night, I'll take it and I'll map it into Fire for you. And what we're doing with that is consolidating all of that real-time data flow and the historic data flow, right, which is really important for context, and getting that all sent along and normalized into that Fire structure and posted to GCP. And so, unlike some of the other partners that you've heard from today, Redox is a little bit different in that we're actually sitting between uh, GCP and your various different clinical systems, not on top of GCP. Um, now, this whole thing is built and running on GCP. Everybody should be uh, happy with that. And it, we'll talk through the, the multi-tenant, how it runs in Redox's tenant and posts to your GCP tenant. Um, but in any case, what we've found is that those existing 6,500 health systems that are 
pushing data to Redox today, are able to really take advantage of the fact that the configuration work and a lot of the logic is in place where if they'd like to test out these generative AI products, if they want to start running data into BigQuery, if they want to start actually trying to make some sense of these troves of data that they've been sitting on for years, um, now is the time to do it. And the really cool part is when you consider you know, what this means in the AI game, everybody wants to get their hands on these tools and they want to let it run through the corpus of information that they've been generating for years and years and years. And that's all in distributed systems in various languages. Nobody can make any sense of it from a human perspective. But what we can do is feed all of it through Redox into a fire structure, push it into a, a fire store on the GCP side. And then for the first time, have all the data in the same place in a consistent format where we can then operate on it. And you think about, well, what am I going to do with it? Well, right now, no one's doing anything with it. And so what are we going to find? I mean, the things that are going to be uncovered in terms of the efficiencies in closing care gaps and improving quality, um, the ability to close a, a patient experience and make it really tight to make sure that the patient has the right information they need at every given moment. Um, that's all stuff that is starting to come alive right now as folks start to feed this data that was previously unstructured and un unusable and really get some utility out of it uh, through these GCP tools. So we talked to folks, um, we actually went out and commissioned a study. Uh, we talked to 300 different payer and provider executives across the country who said, okay, Gen AI, we get it. Everybody's excited about it. What can you tell us about it? And they said, well, we're really into it and, and we want to do it, uh, but we know that we're going to run into problems and we know that it's difficult to activate. Why is that? Well, like we mentioned, uh, the good folks at Google have done the legwork of building everything in fire, the modern language and structure that we can use in healthcare to, to organize our, our data. Um, However, over here on the healthcare data sources side, uh, these systems are not always speaking in perfect fire APIs. And even if they are, fire over here does not always equal fire over there. There's some things you gotta tie together there. Um, with Redux in place, what we were able to do is say, look, it doesn't matter how fast EHRs are coming online and how, how well they're following regulation and getting their fire APIs out the door. Just point whatever you got at us. Take your HL7, take your CCDs, your flat files, your fire APIs, your vendor APIs, just point it over here because we're going to turn everything into fire anyway. And then we're going to post it to the GCP fire store side. And in doing that, folks look in and they say, well, what do I have to do to, uh, to do that on my own? Well, you've got to have folks that are experts in both the legacy language from years ago and the modern language. You got to have folks that understand EHRs and cloud environments. Um, you have to have folks that have maybe done this before and can start with a bit of a head start on the mapping tables and just, you know, what comes out of an epic ADT feed and how do you get that structured into the appropriate fire resources? Same thing with, with CCDs, et cetera. Um, and you can see, you know, folks know we, we don't have this in house. Where do we go for this? Um, the, the short answer is you call me, but we'll get to that part. Uh, where, where we see this culminating is that all of it adds up to this really big issue, which is, okay, I want to use the tools. I have these mountains of data but it's taking me too long to get it activated. And if it's just gonna be a slog of trying to get all this data activated until I can finally use it, uh, I'm just, I'm less interested, right? And so with Redox, what we're trying to bring to market with Google is a, a speed to value. You can get into these products today, you're sitting on the mountains of data today. We can run the, the data through this system and on the outside, we can get some intelligence and some learning out of that. Um, and, and you can see one of those CIOs that was quoted in our, in our interviews you know, they're 200%, they're 300%. Projects are taking six months, then they're taking 12 months, then they're taking 18 months. Um, in Redox's first few deployments with GCP customers just this year, we did 152 day go live, then we did a 75 day go live, then we did a 50 day go live. And now we're looking at, you know, 30, 40, how, how quick can we do this? Um, and what we're seeing is massive volumes of data activated, air free, and by six months in, folks are already looking at, all right, what else can I do? You know, what, what new products can I light up and what initiatives were on my list for next year that I'm now pulling into this year? Um, for everybody who likes boxes and lines, this is our moment. So on the right-hand side, all your clinical data systems, that's 94 different EHRs. If you give me an HIE, I will connect to it. Practice management systems, we can talk about it. If it's got interfaces, I can listen. Um, we pick that up in whatever flavor format it, it wants to come out in. And for those of you who have been indoctrinated to healthcare interoperability, you know that uh, EHR vendor number one customer is not the same as the same EHR vendors number two customer. And there's some site specific variations that need to be dealt with. That's the kind of thing that Redox is taking on at scale for customers. So we get all of those data sources. Redox takes on the work of 
If you imagine a bunch of messages firing in flight, breaking into a million pieces, and then reformatting into a fire message and posting, that's Redux. And what's happening here is on the order of millions of messages a day out of some large provider systems are coming over, reformatting, and in real time posting to the Google endpoint. Now, most of you are like, Matt, you're posting data to an endpoint, who cares? Here's why it's important. EHRs, legacy systems, for the most part, are generating real-time data, real-time event streams. So if you want to get it all and catch it all and keep up with it, you've got to be capable of processing tens of thousands, if not millions of messages a day. Um, and where that breaks down is when you take a message and you break it out and you reformat it into 40 different fire resources and post it, you have to make sure the endpoint can consume that process. And if you look across the market, at what options are out there in terms of activating real-time data. Redox is the fastest solution to get the data up and running and posting, but Google's healthcare API and HDE endpoints are the most performant products in the market in terms of accepting real-time data. And uh, to the point where other uh, competing hyperscalers don't necessarily have options that match up from a performance standpoint. So it really is the only solution that you can do to throw as much data as you can in real time at these really high powered uh, you know, end user tools, right? You've heard all about the different uh, AI portfolio today. You've also heard from the different app suites and the ISVs. You've seen how some of them use Redox for their connections as well. Um, this whole thing and this whole system of infrastructure is all about figuring out what your integration footprint looks like, whatever spectrum. It might be one single EHR. It may be 75 different EHRs. You may be acquiring health systems and bringing on suites of different EHR vendors this year. It doesn't matter. We consider these living and breathing things that we're ma managing and maintaining such that you have a consistent experience in these products on the other side. And what that is leading customers to do, again, for the very first time, is start to take a look inside their systems and go, oh, hey, we learned something. So whether that's for their own benefit and their own uh, you know, organizational improvements or even for things that they can commercialize. Um, there, we're starting to, to uncover a lot of different really creative uh, engineers inside these organizations who are going, oh, this is cool. Uh, could I get three more of these dashboards and, and add four or five more interfaces and, and play around with a few things? Um, so we're really excited to see where this takes us into next year um, with the good folks at Google adding all these different products on the left-hand side of the equation. Uh, there's more and more fun stories that we're going to be able to tell uh, throughout the year. So I want to just wrap up with this, which was an awesome slide that one of the Google FSRs was able to put together this year as we were selling into a, an account together. And we were trying to visualize and talk about that timeline. And what happens if I don't do this? What happens if I build my own integrations? What happens if I ch change my own oil, right? Um, it's, not, it's not a timeline, but you can see over the course of your engagement, over the course of working with GCP, you have the option to continue to build on your success and, and the success in that data compounds. Um, and this first little blue line, I, I, I called it a gross oversimplification at the time, but I kind of like it now. This is Redux, right? This is where we come in and get all those different source systems activated, get all those different interfaces consolidated, get it all mapped into Fire, and get it all posting into GCP. Um, and at that point, you start to unlock all the different portfolio of products and, and options that you can do. And that starts with basic things like improving your provider systems. But then you look at your patient experience, right? And you've heard from League and others that are doing really cool things along that front. Um, you take it to the population health layer. You start to look at you're a national provider with 100 EHRs. For the first time ever, you can get a consistent view from all of those different systems and all of their different languages into what the heck is actually going on inside of your organizations. And so you take that and you apply it to things like improving quality, improving overall physician experience, right? It's, it's really, um, it's impressive what's out there and what's possible. And then up at the end, you see what happens when we're done solving our own problems. Let's go out and let's solve some problems for everybody else, right? Let's figure out what works in our organizations and how to share that and commercialize that with the rest of the provider and payer ecosystems. Um, and so again, already we see folks starting to experiment on that front. And I think it's gonna lead to the kind of stuff that really does improve the patient experience and makes going to the doctor a little bit better for everybody. So I will wrap um, with a quick case study this is just to give you guys some idea of the transactions. This was that 152 day go live. So three different um, Epic sources in this case, all shooting out various different flavors of CCD. We're breaking those CCDs into 40 different fire resources that originally started at about 26. It grew due to demand and, and adjustments that needed to be made. And then we're posting those in real time to GCP where that customer initially used them to work on uh, heat as quality, but has now found that they can expand that to all sorts of different teams. And so, 
particularly for large organizations with centralized clinical data teams, um, our ability to pair and work with those groups to serve other stakeholders across the business has proved to be really uh, an awesome ability to extend the data utility that group number one is activating on behalf of group number two and three and four. Um, 130 million CCDs in the back load, and then we're doing just north of about a million a day at this point, so you know, close to 400 million uh, on an annual basis. Um, these run air free. They run real time. They drive workflows uh, across the business org. And uh, this group is actually looking at expanding to several dozen more source systems uh, coming up this year. Finishing here, we are aligned just like everybody else. You can purchase Redox through Google Marketplace. Um, Redox is also a sales and service partner through our professional services org. So if you engage with Redox professional services, you can transact that method as well. But the technology, the guts of it all runs through Google Marketplace, runs on GCP um, and can help. Again, doesn't run in your tenant, but posts to your GCP tenant. Um, our high level model is a platform license and usage transactions. And so you can start small, you can you know, run it for X amount of transactions. You can grow it to the point where you come to me and you say, Matt, I wanna do 10 million transactions a day. And I go, great, let's talk about how that's gonna perform and what that's gonna look like. Um, if you need to talk to us, you can contact sales on our website or you can come talk to the three of us that are standing outside. Other than that, I'm slightly over time. So thank you so much.